Hello, my lovelies. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys that are new, welcome. My name is Pinky and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. For those of you guys returning, welcome back, my loves. Let's get into the love reading for all zodiac signs. Let's see what's going on with you guys. Definitely stay tuned. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up, as well as the new episodes for Cafecito Podcast. By the way, we are finally dropping the I Dated All Zodiac Signs so you don't have to. Um, so you guys definitely stay tuned for that. It is, um, we're spilling the tea. <laughs> All right, let's get into your readings. If you guys are interested in any personal readings or any type of spell work, go ahead and click the link below. You'll be able to find all of that on there. If you guys don't follow our social medias, I highly encourage you to follow them. All of that is on the description box below. Please do not fall for any fake people pretending to be me. There is hundreds, if not thousands, on TikTok as well as on Instagram. Do not fall for it. Um, all of my links are connected to my YouTube channel. That's how you know it's me, okay? All right, let's get into it. We're going to begin here with Virgo, as it is still Virgo season, getting ready for Libra. <laughs> All right, we're going to begin here with Virgo. Let's see what's going on in regards to your love and romance. All right. We call upon all our wise and loving spirit guides, spirits of divination. Please step forward. Allow me to open up as a vessel. Let it be who speaks through me. Allow me to see here since we understand receive the messages loud and clearly. What are the messages for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance? The person that they're dealing with or the person that's on their mind. Let's see what is unfolding. Give me five cards to represent all five spectrums. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go, Virgo. Let's see what's going on with you guys. Are you guys ready for Halloween as it is quickly approaching? You guys know your girl is ecstatic about it. All right, here we go. We have the King of Cups, the Emperor card. We have the World card. The Four of Swords. And we have the Lover's card. All right. Bottom of the deck, we have the Death card. So there is massive transformation in your love life, Virgo. I don't need to tell you guys because I'm sure you guys are already experiencing this. If you're not, just get ready, okay? Especially with this eclipse that we just experienced right at the axis of Libra. Sorry, right at the axis of Pisces and your sign Virgo. Um, yeah, massive transformation in regards to love and romance. Now, what I am seeing here is we have two energies. We have the King of Cups and the Emperor card. So this could potentially indicate for some of you guys out there options, lots of options. Now, the King of Cups as a current situation, obviously wanting to know where do we go from here? Where, what is it that I want? What is it that, so I see you guys very much in your head about a connection or a relationship or relationships in general. Um, and I do see that there is a culmination here, especially with the death card. So for some of you, you could have recently experienced some type of separation, some type of pulling back. For others of you, there could have been an ending of a relationship or a connection, but the positive in this is that through this transformation, through this ending, it was needed. So for those of you guys wondering if there's going to be reconciliation, let's just say there's a separation or something like that. Is there a reconciliation in the future? Absolutely. The death card indicates to me there was an ending cycle that had to happen in order to bring some type of stability to the weakness of the structure of this connection. So Again, especially when we look at your feelings, the two of, sorry, the emperor card, you're wanting something stable. You're wanting something long-term. You're looking towards the world card. So there is massive transformation that's happening for a lot of you Virgos out there. Um, if you feel like you've been dealing with a person and it just hasn't panned out or it hasn't gone the way you want it, that's quickly going to be changing. Again, even if there was an ending or some type of temporary, you know, separation, it's coming back together and it was necessary in order to bring order or to bring structure to this connection. Um, 
when we look at the other person's feelings for you, the world card, it's like they they're realizing Virgo is who I want. Virgo is who I need. At this point in time, let's stop with the fuckery and let's come together and solidify this connection. So again, even if you're dealing with a separation right now, they are telling you that it was necessary. Now, your advice here, the action that you need to take moving forward is the Four of Swords. Get out of your own way, Virgo. Get out of your mind. Get out of your own way. Stop self-sabotaging. Stop thinking, I don't deserve this. It's not for me. It's not panning out. It's not going to, like, stop over obsessing about what you could do. Because sometimes all we can do is get out of our own fucking way. And that's what they're telling you. You need to step back. Pull your energy back. Put your energy towards other things. Focus your energy, your, you know, that blockage that you're experiencing right now. It could, for some of you guys, could be your fears being triggered right now. And what they're telling you is you need to get out of your own way in order to be able to see things unfold. So again, there is a necessity or there is a necessity to bring some type of end to something, to the lack of structure in regards to your love and romance to be able to land and end here, right? Because the outcome is the lovers coming together with the world card, higher elevation of connection or a solidifying of a connection, making it official, taking it to the next level for some of you guys, even engagement. Yes, even through the death card. And see, the thing is that sometimes we can meet people that are right for us and we're right for them. We're just not in the same vibration. And sometimes we have to fall away to be able to come back together. And that's what they're showing me here. Now, for others of you, especially those of you guys that are single, there is a massive connection that's coming in, a very strong connection that's coming in that is going to bring the structure and the longevity that you've been looking for, Virgo. So good for you. All right, my loves, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Libra. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Give me five cards to represent all aspects in regards to this connection or the person on Libra's mind. What is unfolding for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with you, Libra. Again, Libra is another sign. You guys could be potentially going through massive transformations when we're talking about love and romance. Um really any aspect depending on where you have it placed we have the seven of swords i'm gonna put it back in there see if it comes out again um so yeah let's see what's going on with libra sun moon rising venus here we go libra all right my loves let's see what is going on in your love life all right we're beginning here with the world card death card wow eight of Wands, Tower, holy crud, Ten of Swords, okay. All right, Libra, so right at the center we have the World card. There is a cycle that has come to its completion, has come to an end. For some of you guys, they are just highlighting the eclipse that we just experienced. Um, but there is an ending here. For some of you guys, you could have potentially ended a relationship or some type of connection. For others of you, um, there is a ending cycle, especially these are the Libras out there that are single. The message that's coming through very strongly for you guys is there is a cycle that's come to an end. There is a completion. For some of you guys, you could have been dealing with exes, uh, trying to revisit that situation, trying to fix it, trying to just, you know, you make up, break up, make up, break up. This is coming to an end. And you're being forced to acknowledge that because only through this are you being able to expand your horizons and be open to love again. Okay. So I see, especially here with the death card, the tower and the 10 of swords, this, these are scary cards, you guys. But when we talk about love in general and in, in the connection, especially because the world is highlighting this. You need to stop dealing with cycles that are already done. You need to stop dealing with people that are already like you've moved on from them. For some of you guys, you still feel connected, but it's not so much that there is love or that 
it has more to do with the comfortability of it or it's kind of reminding me of like, I'd rather deal with this devil because I know them um, than dealing with someone new. What they're telling you is you need to stop self-sabotaging yourself. It's come to an end. If you're not dealing with an end, you will be forced to deal with an ending that may potentially be very eye-opening for you. When I see the tower and the death card, it's like massive, massive upheaval, massive change here. It's drastic, right? But we have the death card behind this. So what does that mean? For some of you guys, you're already foreseeing this. For others of you, you're already sensing it. For others of you, you're going through it. But what they're telling you is that in this cycle, in this conclusion of this cycle, there's something beautiful at the end of it. There is something that is meant for you. So stop holding back. Stop holding on to people that are no longer serving you because they are not doing you any justice. It's time for you to keep it pushing and open yourself to massive possibilities. Now, if you are dealing with a specific situation, it's come to an end and you need to deal with that, Libra, because the more you try to hold on to it, the more you try to force it, the more difficult it's going to be, the more painful it's going to be, and there's going to be lack of progress you're not going to feel satiated. You're not going to feel satisfied. You're not going to feel fulfilled in this relationship that you're literally still trying to hold on to when it's crumbling, when it's falling apart. It's the universe pushing you, telling you, you know, it's, it's time to let it go, especially with the tower and the ten of swords. There is an inevitable ending that is unfolding and we must accept that. To be able to move towards our destiny, to move towards what we are deserving of, right? To move towards love. Some of you guys, especially those of you guys that have been single for quite a while, maybe you went through a very traumatic ending, traumatic situation where you're still holding on to the fear of that pain that really transformed you. And in transforming you, what's happened, it's that it's created a barrier where you're not allowing yourself, you're not allowing people to get near you, or you're not allowing yourself to give yourself the opportunity to be happy because you are deserving of being happy, Libra. You are worthy of it. All right, my loves. Now, just for... I was going to say just for... <laughs> Just the general energy, two of pentacles. It's restoring the balance, bringing the balance into your life and letting go of what no longer is serving you. For some of you guys, what I'm hearing is the person that you're dealing with or have been dealing with has been holding you back. And you know that. If this message is for you, you know that. You, you sense it. You feel it. Maybe you've been denying it, but it's time for you to realize that and to free yourself from allowing this person holding you back. All right. All right. Moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Scorpio. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love and romance, give me five cards to represent all five aspects. Oh. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with my Scorpios out there. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Scorpio in regards to love and romance for the remainder of September 2024. Here we go, Scorpio. All right. Let's see what's going on with you, Scorpios, out there. All right. We're beginning here with the lover's card right at the center. The ace of cups, ten of wands, seven of wands, and the moon card. Wow. Okay. Okay. Bottom of the deck, we have the Seven of Cups. Okay, so Scorpio, you may be dealing with a situation where you feel like at this point you need clarity or you need to know exactly where you stand with this person, right? For some of you guys, it is the wanting to figure out what doesn't make sense or what's not adding up. So what I mean by this is I'm almost getting like an inkling of a lot of confusion going on in this connection. Uh, for some of you guys, you may be feeling like this person may be entertaining other people or like they're giving you hot and cold vibes. Now, when we talk about how you feel about this person, right, your thoughts and feelings is the Ace of Cups. So you feel the connection. Obviously, you, you feel love towards them. 
how your person is viewing the situation is the 10 of wands. So this is indicating to me that at this point, they're seeing the relationship or the connection as a burden or they're feeling like they're aware that you're wanting some type of commitment. They're not ready for that type of commitment. They're not ready to focus just on you. Yeah. They're not ready to just focus on you. Uh, for some of you guys, you may be dealing with the person that has commitment issues. And it's almost like the deeper that this connection goes or the more you guys deal with each other, they're feeling the pressure of knowing that they need to step up and there is still lack of desire of wanting to step up. Now, in regards to the action that you need to take, Scorpio, at this point in time, seven of wands, you need to stand your ground. You need to be transparent in what it is that you expect from this person, um, even being vocal about it, especially with the moon card here. Um, I feel like if you continue on the path, meaning if you continue dealing with fuckery, and I'm going to be honest, I feel like they're not... The reason why you're feeling confused is because they're purposely confusing you. They're not telling you exactly what it is that they want. They're not stepping up. They're, they know that they're not doing what you're expecting and they know that it's creating frustration within you and they just don't want to deal with that burden. The burden of having to step up, basically. The burden of having to be solid in what it is that they want. Um, they'd rather keep hiding things or they'd rather maybe you're dealing with an avoidant, someone that doesn't really know how to deal with emotions. The moment they feel some type of connection, they kind of run away from it, that type of energy. But again, your advice here is the seven of wands. You need to stand your ground. You need to know what you deserve and what you don't deserve. Stop putting up with shit that you shouldn't be putting up with, Scorpio, especially if this person is making you feel like you're not doing enough. The reason why they make you feel like you're not doing enough is because they themselves cannot do enough because they don't have it within them to give or provide that for you. You know, so again, what they're telling you here is stand your ground, know what you deserve, be vocal about what it is that you want and what you expect. And if they can't give that to you, show them where the fuck the door is at. Don't waste your time. Especially right now, you guys, that we just experienced an eclipse. Like, what people don't understand with eclipses is this celestial event that will continue to progress and unfold for the next coming six months. So, around this time, people are going to be coming out of our lives, but also people are going to be coming in. And the ones that are already around you are going to have to elevate themselves to a higher vibration. And if they cannot, then that's why they walk out. That's why a lot of people walk out of your life when eclipses happen or when shit falls away. And what's meant for you, it's like a realignment of your soul, basically, eclipses. So it's like if we're on the wrong path or we're dealing with the wrong people, we're going to be realigned. There's going to be something that happens that opens our eyes like, hey, this is not the person for you. Stop wasting your time. So again... Stand your ground. Be vocal about what it is that you want. And if they can give to you what you want, show them the door, Scorpio. All right, my loves. All right, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Sagittarius. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on in regards to love and romance. Give me five cards to represent all five aspects in this connection or on the person of Sagittarius. Let's see what's going on with my Saggies. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. You guys don't forget to hit that like button so you guys can uh, help us with the algorithm. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. Hit that notification bell because they don't always notify you guys when I go live and I'm going to be more proactive on that. So, all right, Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Okay, here we go, Saggies. Let's see what's going on with my Sagittarians out there. All right. We're beginning here with the death card. Transformation. Ten of cups. King of wands. Six of pentacles. Wow. And the knight of swords. Okay. Bottom of the deck. Three of swords. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. So 
the energy here with the three of swords is for some of you guys, you, I want to say your wounds and heels are being activated right now. What do I mean by that? I'm sensing the three of swords in a reverse position. So for some of you guys, it's you're dealing with the situation that is bringing to you or reminding you a lot of past experiences or past relationships. For some of you guys, childhood traumas. Um, because what, what's coming through very strongly here is like there are certain aspects of this connection that is triggering childhood wounds. So as an example, if you know you have, for instance, abandonment issues, the person you may be dealing with may be giving you hot and cold or maybe not necessarily purposely for some of you guys it could be that this person is like busy that they're very active that they have a lot of things going on and that wound of yours hasn't fully healed so there's a constant fear that they're walking away or that they're giving attention to other people or that they're forgetting about you or that they're abandoning you abandonment issues so for a lot of you guys, I feel like you're being triggered right now in regards to traumas that you haven't fully dealt with in the past uh, that are coming to surface in this connection. Now, with the death card here as the situation, for some of you guys, it could be in fact that there was a separation or some type of breakup. If you haven't experienced that for some of you guys, that's what's going to be unfolding. But what they're showing me here with the death card is that there is a transformation that is happening in regards to the Ten of Cups. In regards to what? Childhood traumas. So on the grander scale of things, I feel like this person is triggering certain aspects to you that you haven't fully healed. Um, and the reason why this is coming to be is because you need to heal. You need to let go of self-limiting beliefs. You need to let go of allowing your biggest fears to take over you to the point where you feel like it's almost like you're kind of forcing things to happen because that's what you believe is the reality of it. Instead of going about it the other way and fully embracing, because remember, rainbows are a representation of healing. So it's about almost forcing you to acknowledge the things that you need to heal within yourself. It's kind of the situation of when you find people that have a tendency of going from one relationship to another, instead of like giving their giving them themselves the time to heal from that, to learn whatever was meant to be learned in that connection, instead of doing that, they go from one relationship to another, avoiding having to heal that shadow side, right? That aspect that was hurt. Um, and then you go about life and then when things are going really good for you, you often question when is the other shoe going to drop? And it's not that it keeps repeating. Maybe it does for some of you guys, but the reason why it keeps repeating is because you give it, that's your reality. You've accepted that that's your reality. You've accepted this is what always happens in relationships. Therefore, when the person starts to pull away, again, we go back to, I see a person that is very, very busy or someone that is very goal oriented or someone that is maybe you're not used to dealing with people that are so focused and determined that you see that as them pulling away when in reality, they're just focused on the goals that they're trying to achieve. And that triggers your traumas or your fears so you start to accept that this person also is going to leave you and then boom, it becomes an issue where there's arguments, where there's misunderstandings and the inevitable ending, the inevitable ending of that relationship. And then you look back and you're like, I knew it. You need to start telling yourself a different story, Sagittarius, and not let your fears get the best of you when it comes to connections and relationships. The reason I say that is because in regards to your feelings, you have the 10 of cups your person's feeling king of wands. Their focus towards you. They're looking towards you. They want you or they're wanting to bring some type of solid connection and they're willing to put in the work. But again, your advice here, six of pentacles, is about balancing the skills. It's about knowing when to give knowing when to take, not overdoing it, 
balance your energy. The moment you're able to realize that it is important for you to nurture and to heal certain aspects to yourself, don't expect your partners or the people that you deal with or the people that you date, don't expect them to love you so much that they put you together. No one can do that for you but yourself, Sagittarius. So you have to heal those things. There are things that sometimes we feel like in a relationship we need our partner to be that and it's unfair because they cannot be an example, they cannot, like, metaphorically speaking, they cannot be who broke you. Do you get what I'm saying? So you have to put in the, the, the work to heal on yourself, to put yourself together so that you can come into this connection or into this relationship knowing when to give 50-50. Knowing that, yes, the person that you're dealing with can love you unconditionally, but they're not going to love you to the point of teaching you how to love yourself. That is something you have to do for yourself. And I feel like in the past relationships or connections, that's something that's been very massive or it's something, a theme that you've been dealing with for a very long time, Sagittarius. Now, if you're able to do that, what's coming through for you? Quick momentum, quick motion, you know, things not feeling like they're falling apart. For some of you guys, things like you feel like when it comes to relationships, things are going good, but then something's going to happen and then it does. And then to you, you connect that as an ending or the demise of that relationship. So you're the one that creates these obstacles. You're the one that creates, you know, this stagnant energy. You got to you got to start telling yourself a different story, Sagittarius, in order to be able to see things unfold from the beginning to, to for it to last and become something solid. All right. All right, my lovelies. Moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Capricorn. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on in their love life. Give me five cards to represent all five aspects. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with my Cappies out there in regards to love and romance for the remainder of September 2024. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. One more shuffle. Oh, oh. We got cards flying out. All right, I'm going to put them back. One more shuffle. Thank you. <laughs> we'll do two more. All right, Capricorns. Let's see what's going on with you guys. Here we go. All right. We're starting off here with the five of pentacles. We have judgment. Ten of pentacles. <laughs> five of wands and the emperor card. Okay. The reason I'm laughing is because for some of you guys, Capricorns out there, you may be dealing with the Sagittarius or Sagittarius. You may be dealing with the Capricorn as I'm seeing a theme here. Bottom of the deck is the nine of wands. Okay. So... The message that I just gave to Sagittarius is something that's coming through very strongly for some of you Capricorn. So for some of you Cappies, you guys are Saggy Cusp. The Nine of Wands as a general energy indicates to me, you've been through it, you've gone through it, you've experienced a lot of troubling, difficult situations when it comes to love and romance, right? This is the wounded heal, uh, sorry, the wounded uh, warrior. This is the person that really has gone through it. Now, the crowning of the energy is the five of pentacles and the five of pentacles again for some of you guys wounds are being triggered right now um five of pentacles is the card that represents the not feeling enough or feeling like you're not deserving of what it is that you want and this is the overall situation so for some of you guys you could be dealing with a situation where you feel like the person is either ignoring you or you're feeling like the person is pulling away or like they're putting you in the back burner. Here's the thing though, Capricorn. With the card of judgment, right? In your thoughts and feelings, you're the one that's perceiving this as your reality. What do I mean by this? That there's no standing to that. There's no standing to the story that you keep telling yourself or there's no standing to, there's no validity to what, how you're viewing things, right? When we deal with people that have gone through a lot, 
that have really struggled or that have really gone through it, right? If they don't put in the work to heal, to raise their vibration, to heal, to be confident, to know that they are worthy for the merely fact of being human, right? The simple fact that you are a human, that you are having a human experience, that in itself should give you enough reason to understand that you are worthy of anything. Anything that you're capable of thinking, dreaming, or wishing. Just for the simple fact that you are human, okay? But obviously our experiences taint us, right? Our difficulties, our setbacks, our betrayals, everything we go through in life, it taints us. It makes us see our reality and our life in a very different way. That puts you in a position of being extremely guarded. And in that guardedness, right, in that fear of being hurt, you're constantly on the lookout. You're constantly self-aware of things that don't make sense or that make you feel like they don't make sense because your awareness to negativity is so big because you, you, you do that as a defense mechanism to protect you from being hurt. But what you're really doing is you are hurting yourself in the process of constantly trying to figure out when they're getting ready to hurt you. Do you get what I'm saying? So you're not able to be present or live in the present because you're trying to, you're very hyper aware of inconsistencies. So you tell yourself this story in your mind that you're trying to protect yourself, but really what you're doing is you're judging the person or the people that come into your life based on your previous experiences, based on other people. You are quick to judge them or you are quick to convince yourself that you're not worthy or deserving of the people that you're dealing with or the people that come into your life. Now, this is not to say that they're, you know, maybe they've given you reasons to doubt them. Maybe they've given you reasons to not fully trust, right? But is there some validity to the statement that you keep repeating your pattern of thinking, right? That you're constantly hyper aware of what doesn't add, what doesn't make sense of their actions. It's like you are laser focused in their actions. And by you being laser focused in that, what you're actually doing is you're preparing yourself for bad experiences. And that is exactly what unfolds. And the reason I say this is because the judgment is you passing judgment or you putting judgment on how you think, how you think things should unfold. And your way of thinking is not necessarily right, Capricorn. Sometimes we got to just let things unfold. They may not come the way we want them to, but it'll give us the results that we are desiring. Do you get what I'm saying? And the reason I say that is 10 of pentacles is in the position of the other person's thoughts and feelings. They're wanting something long term. They're wanting longevity. They're want for some of you guys, they may feel like they're wanting you to show them that you are emotionally constrained. <laughs> what do I mean by this? The five of wands is an indication of like being very defensive, being very like hyper vigilant being ready to fight, being ready to argue. And maybe they're expecting and wanting for you to show them that you've matured, for you to show them that you want it too, but that you're going to learn how to control yourself, whether it's like you get defensive and then you get rude with your mouth or you start to get disrespectful or, you know, and they're wanting to see that you're able, that you're mature enough to control your emotions and not go out of your way to be spiteful or mean because you f the moment you feel you're hurt, that's your way of defending yourself. And what you're actually doing is making them feel like they're nothing. Do you get what I'm saying? So be mindful of that because I feel like the person that you're dealing with is someone that for them, maybe when they were young, they didn't have emotional security. So in order for them to feel like this can actually go into something long term, they have to feel that emotional stability because they've never had that. And there's a desire within them. They don't want toxicity. They're looking for something stable, especially here with the Emperor card and the Ten of Pentacles. 
and the emperor as the final outcome. Structure, stability. You know, so again, I feel like there is a lot of, you know, there's a lot of energy for a lot of signs that we're kind of being forced and pushed to heal certain aspects to ourselves that we haven't healed or haven't fully healed from that is becoming a theme and it starts to affect and it starts to bleed into our relationships and connections. So good luck with that Capricorn. All right, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Give me five cards to represent five aspects. Here we go. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with my Aquarians. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. Aquarius, let's see what's going on with you guys. All right, we have the death card. Wow. <laughs> oh my goodness, the death card has been coming out to mostly all the signs. Not surprised there though. All right, we have the four of cups. We have the page of pentacles. Oh, someone is unsure. Four of swords and the ace of wands. Bottom of the deck, we have the nine of swords. Okay. So Aquarius, the general energy is a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress. I feel like for a lot of you guys, obviously, you know, with Pluto being in Capricorn, it left your side, but it will return. There's a lot of anxiety in regards to your goals when we're talking about longevity and long term, not just in relationships, but in general. This could be career, finance, etc. Um and there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of stress. I feel for some of you guys, you're going to start to feel the pressure of Saturn, right? Um, sorry, the pressure of Pluto, um, because it reminds us of really how little time we have. Uh, we're talking on the grander scale of things, uh, living in this existence. So for some of you guys, it's dealing with a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress about the future. Um for others of you, there is stress because there is a feeling of, for some of you guys, you could have recently separated or there could have been a conversation about separation and that's what's creating the anxiety. Uh, here's the thing though, with the death card right at the center, there is a need for, there is a need for an ending. Um, especially with the four of cups here in the position of your thoughts and feelings, I feel like you've either disassociated or you no longer feel the connection. You don't, you no longer feel the spark for some of you guys you're holding on because there could be children involved. Um, but there, the other person's thoughts and feelings is the page of pentacles. It's like they're very slow in progress to what it is that they want, or they're slow in progress to their communication. There is something that is off in this connection. So for some of you guys, your love language is just completely different and you guys can't seem to get on the same page. Um, and I think that there is, like I said, for some of you guys, it's feeling the pressure of at this point in time, I should be in a committed relationship. For others of you, it could be at this point in time, we should be more solid in this connection. And it just feels like we're kind of just taking it day by day. So there is frustration in that, in the lack of connection but I feel for the majority of you the reason why it feels this disconnected is because you guys do have in fact very different love languages and that becomes a challenge in relationships you know for some of you guys you just need someone that to be constant you know they, they just need to be constant they don't have to be overly smothering they don't have and for other people they need that they need someone that's clingy they need someone that so I feel like both of you guys are in completely different spectrums. There is a disconnection here that's happening. And again, what is coming through very strongly is if you feel at this point like you don't feel the connection the way it was and they themselves are kind of like, eh, whatever happens, happens. I think that it is important to take into perspective. Is it time to give each other some space? Is it time to give each other some room to miss each other? Um, because sometimes that happens, you know, it's kind of like the conversation that I was having, I, I believe, with uh, Libra or Virgo, uh, where sometimes we have to fall apart so that we can come back together. 
And I feel like for a lot of you guys, especially with the Ace of Wands here, it's because the passion has been lost or you guys haven't fully focused on nurturing that aspect to the connection, which therefore led you guys to feel very separated or very disconnected from each other. So again, if you feel like those are themes that are starting to come up, understand that yes, it does, you know, for any relationship, it takes effort. And sometimes we have to nurture that passion, that desire, that want so that we can continue igniting the flame of passion. And I feel like for some of you guys, it's the understanding that it's not there anymore, meaning the love is not there no more. For others of you, it's realizing that you no longer feel this connection and you're realizing that maybe you are in fact trying to force it. Um, and the reason I say that is because in your position is the four of cups. Their position is the page of pentacles, which is still trying to put in the effort. Um, whereas you feel very disconnected, very disassociated to this, to this connection. Um, especially in the advice position, give yourself some room, give yourself some space or give each other some room to breathe, give each other some room to miss each other. Maybe that'll help you bring, bring you guys back together. And if not, you're realizing <laughs> I'm better, you know, embracing a new beginning. So good luck with that Aquarius. <laughs> All right, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Pisces. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Oh, give me five cards to represent all five aspects. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with my Pisces. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go, Pisces. Let's see what's going on in your love life. You guys don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. If you are interested in a personal reading or any type of personal spell work or you want to follow our other social medias, click the description box below. You'll be able to find that information on there. Jesus. The death card again in the same position as Aquarius. So for some of you Pisces, you're dealing with an Aquarius. All right, second card here. What the heck? Four of Cups. You guys seen me shuffle, right? <laughs> what the heck? Page of Pentacles, Page of Swords, Three of Cups. Wow, you guys. All right, Pisces. Some of you guys are dealing with an Aquarius. Or Aquarius, you may be dealing with the Pisces. Bottom of the deck, we have the Lover's card. Okay, so what I'm seeing here for Pisces, there is, this is so mind-blowing because you guys seen me shuffle, right? And we pulled out three cards that came out for Aquarius. All right, so the current situation is the death card. For some of you guys, there was an ending or some type of separation. For some of you guys, you could be dealing with a third-party situation or finding out that your person was dealing with a third party situation. I feel like you're over it though, Pisces, for some of you guys. Um, it's almost like realizing it's not worth putting in the effort anymore. Um, I see the person that you're dealing with is very emotionally immature. Uh, this is a person that could try to portray themselves a certain way. So what's giving me very much the vibes is like a person that sells you a dream. They like, ask you what your type of person is and then they become that but then they're, they're not really that there is inconsistency in that and the reason i say that is again page of pentacles doesn't especially because it's pentacles it does indicate something solid however um as a page they're still immature they still don't know exactly they haven't figured it out yet um and i feel like for some of you guys you're dealing with the situation where they tell you yes you know, we can get on better terms. Yes, we can work on it. Yes, this, yes, that. But really, they're not really doing the effort. They're not really putting effort, um, especially with the lover's card here. It's like being at crossroads and realizing, Pisces, is it worth the effort at this point? Is it worth me pursuing this connection? And for a lot of you guys, the advice position is the page of swords. It's be honest and cut through the bullshit, especially if you feel or sense that their intention is elsewhere with the three of cups here. 
um, that they're not putting in the effort, they're not putting in the consistency, they're not really proving to you what they're telling you. And for some of you guys, what I'm hearing is that this person is really good at promising things, but they're not necessarily good at the coming through with them. So again, it's time that you start to pay attention, Pisces, to their actions versus their words. Are their words, what they're telling you, is it something that they can prove to you through actions or is it just words? Do you get what I'm saying? It's kind of like that, you know, um, that meme on, on Instagram that is like, if your person couldn't speak, would they still show you through actions? Would they still make you feel like they love you? It's kind of that. And keep in mind, Pisces, you guys have Saturn there. You guys have been having Saturn there. And with Saturn, it's discipline, but it's also longevity. And it's like testing you. Are you romanticizing this person? Have you created this person in your mind of what you think they should be versus who they really are? And now you're being forced to see who they really are. What are you going to do with that? Are you going to continue holding on, hoping for the best? Or are you going to realize this person is not even giving half of what I'm asking for? And at this point, it's not worth the energy, the effort. It's best to let it burn. You get what I'm saying? So again, a lot of you guys are having this reawakening I shouldn't say a reawakening. I, I feel like it's more like a refocusing of the lens and really seeing things for what they are and making the decision. If, if that connection is not as strong anymore as it was, is it because of all the letdowns? Is it because they are just inconsistent? Is it because they're not coming through on their promises? And at that point, you know, if your answer is yes to everything, is it worth you continuing to sacrifice holding on to this relationship? And I say sacrifice because in essence, you kind of are sacrificing yourself, Pisces. You're sacrificing your happiness because you're holding on to someone that's not giving you the happiness that you deserve or that you want or that you need. And by standing still, you're kind of also blocking the person that is for you. So you are sacrificing. I feel for a lot of you guys, the end of this month, though, there's realization that's happening and for some of you guys you're walking away from this connection all right moving on here let's see what's going on with aries aries sun moon rising venus aries sun moon rising venus in regards to love and romance what is unfolding for aries give me five cards to represent all five aspects in this connection aries sun moon rising venus let's see what's going on with my aries out there Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the remainder of September 2024. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Aries. Oh, we got a card flying out. Strength card, putting it back in. See if it comes out again. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with my Aries out there. Okay, one more shuffle. Thank you. All right, here we go, Aries. Let's see what's going on with you guys in love and romance. Oh, we have a card here. All right, here we go. First card here is the Five of Pentacles. That's another card that's been coming out for a lot of signs. All right, we have the Justice card. We have the Page of Wands. We have the Hanged Man and the Chariot. Bottom of the deck, Two of Swords. All right. So for some of you guys, for some of you Aries, you're contemplating a connection where you feel at this point in time that they are either ignoring you, they're putting you out in the cold, or they've been distant. Um, for others of you, it's realizing, it's realizing certain traits that you possess that you have not wanted to heal from. And the reason I say that is the Two of Swords always indicates to me kind of blocking yourself emotionally or blocking yourself, trying to figure out your truth, trying to silence everything around you to find the truth within you. So there's a bit of soul searching in this card. Now, with the Five of Pentacles here right at the center, this is about not feeling enough or judging yourself from past experiences or past relationships, judging yourself 
to not be enough for the person that you may be dealing with. Okay, so it's almost, this could be vice versa. It is a general reading. So it could be you passing judgment on this person or it could be you judging that person like they're going to treat you or react a certain way based on past experiences for you, Aries. Now, in regards to your thoughts and feelings, again, Justice card is about you maybe judging them too harshly, um, maybe not allowing yourself to feel Maybe being scared to feel, right? The five of pentacles. It's like preventing you because you've been hurt. You've been through it. So it's it's internalizing what it is that you want for a lot of you. Um, for some of you, there's a very strong connection here and it's forcing you to really understand it's almost like you're passing judgment on this person, but at the same time, you're judging yourself because of this person. So for some of you guys, it could be a theme of like feeling not worthy or feeling like they deserve better or feeling like you deserve better and you're kind of judging them without really giving them the opportunity. In their thoughts and feelings for you, Page of Wands, they want to see where this goes for some of you guys, it's the fear that this person is not going to be here for a long time. Maybe it's the way you guys met. Maybe it's the way you guys started dealing with each other. Maybe it's because you know this person's past or their history. It's it's you. I see you guys like really going within yourselves, trying to figure out like, should I allow myself to feel is basically what's coming through. And for some of you guys, it could be that this person may be very like fiery. It could be that this person is very passionate. It could be that you feel like this person has a lot of things going on where it's triggering certain aspects. If I open myself up enough, am I going to end up getting hurt? Is this a person that's not going to be here for a long time? That type of self-talk is what's happening. And I feel that that's what's affecting the dynamic. However, in the actions that you need to take, you got to see things from a different perspective, Aries. You got to get out of, you know, your stubbornness to see or to force yourself to see this person the way you do or to even judge them. Are you having really high expectations or are you judging everything that they do, even the way they talk to you, even the way they express or the way they communicate in their text messaging? Are you always trying to like analytically fucking read through the lines? And I feel like your fears is what's keeping you from being able to go towards something very positive. Why? Because the outcome here is the chariot. There is success in this connection, but I feel like you're kind of self-sabotaging yourself, Aries. Um, now, this could be the other way around. Keep in mind, it is a general reading. So it could be that potentially what's happening is you're dealing with someone that maybe in the past they have commitment issues. And maybe that's what's scaring you. And maybe that's where like you're kind of treading lightly. But I feel like if you learn to see things from a different perspective and the different perspective would be maybe this person is not as scared or fearful of commitment. Maybe they just been hurt a lot that they don't want to waste their time. Do you get what I'm saying? The moment you're able to try to see things from a different perspective, get out of your own way, stop self-sabotaging yourself or stop trying to prevent yourself from feeling is the moment that you're going to see momentum pick up and you're going to be able to see that this actually may potentially have a future, Aries. All right, my loves. All right, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Taurus. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love and romance, give me five cards to represent all five aspects. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love and romance, let's see what's going on with my Taurus. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love, here we go, Taurus. Let's see what's going on with you guys. All right, Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with my Taurus out there. All right, we have the King of Cups here. We have the Knight of Swords. We have the Five of Cups. We have the Four of Wands, Ace of Wands, bottom of the deck. 
we have the queen of cups. Oh, we have, wow, we have, <laughs> we have the couple here. Queen of cups. Okay. So queen and king of cups, whenever we see royals, right, it's indicating to me that this is in fact a soul type of connection. Uh, for some of you guys, it could have a lot to do with Okay, so I'm getting, okay, so they're showing me different timelines. For some of you guys, this is going to be specifically for Taurus that are single out there, okay? All right, Taurus, so for those of you guys that are single and have been single for a while, I feel like a person from your past, this could be an ex um, or, you know, the longest relationship you had in the past, I feel like they were still in your energy. For some of you guys, you still may be dealing with them. Uh, this could have been a person you were married to. This could have been a person you were living with or perhaps have children from. They've been very much in your energy, meaning that there is still like a, a soul type of connection there. Um, not soulmate energy. I mean soul tie, uh, which is a difference. Um, so it's like you guys look into each other's lives constantly or like constantly wanting to know what the other is up to, what they're doing. I feel like that has affected your love life. But moving forward... And they are giving me specifically um, going towards the month of October. There is going to be this timeline that you're shifting to where maybe in the past four months, maybe in the past three months, maybe in the past two months, maybe a week ago, you guys have been feeling overly sensitive and overly emotional when you look to the past. It's almost like reminiscing or feeling nostalgic, even crying. And the reason for this is because though you may not recognize it, your soul is, is think of it this way, your soul is kind of mourning the loss of who you were at that point in time. And it's getting ready to make a major shift, a major jump in timelines where you're going to be vibrating to a higher frequency, meaning you're going towards a new calling, you're opening yourself up to a new cycle, this attachment is no longer going to be, therefore giving you the opportunity to find your happiness again. Do you get what I'm saying? So I this is specifically for those of you guys that have been single for quite a while. The energy of a person from a past or an ex-lover was still very constant and very present in your life. Um, for some of you guys, it was the fear of getting hurt again and you know, you're, you've been carrying this. But what they're showing me is that if you've been overly emotional, if you've been crying lately a lot, it's because you're mourning the loss of the person that you were at some point in your past. Your soul is getting ready to elevate. You're getting ready to take it to the next level. You're basically stepping into a new timeline where you're being forced to be different. You're being forced to see things from a different perspective. And through this process, you're embracing your happiness, your long-term commitment. For some of you guys, your end-all be-all, okay? Now, for those of you guys that are currently in a relationship, there may have been a bit of setbacks. You may be feeling like maybe your partner, maybe even yourself, you've been overly expressive, maybe a little bit aggressive in your communication, and your partner is really feeling, you know, um, really feeling like they're not... It, it, it's giving me very much the vibes like they they're not doing any like they can't do anything right. What I'm hearing is I can't get it right. I can't do anything right. So maybe you're becoming a little bit overly judgmental or maybe you're becoming a bit aggressive in the way you express yourself, the way you communicate to your partner. So it's almost giving me the energy of feeling like you guys have been dealing with a bit of challenges lately. I want to say the past week or so. Um, for some of you guys, it could get, go a little bit further than that. But there is really a feeling of like almost them feeling or sensing like maybe you're falling out of love with them. However, I feel like as time progresses, as the weeks go by, you guys are going to be able to meet each other halfway. You guys are going to be able to fully express. And I'm going to be honest, I feel like your partner has been holding back a lot because they don't want to be hurt for. They don't want to hurt your feelings. And I feel like that has been lost in translation and maybe you're feeling like they don't give a shit and that's where your aggressiveness or your frustration is coming from. 
Uh, however, I feel like there is a conversation that will be have where you're going to be able to really express yourselves, express your feelings, acknowledge each other's feelings, um, and you're going to be able to get back to where you're at or where you want to be at. It's bringing solidification. It's bringing the strengthening, even igniting the passion in this connection, especially those of you guys that maybe um, you're dealing with like a long-term relationship. You're dealing with the partner you've been married to for a very long time, etc. There is like a rekindling of this connection. There is a deepening of, of this connection. And I feel like, again, I'm going to be honest. I feel like for a lot of you guys, it's just that the communication has been all over the place. Like, Either you say something and your partner takes it wrong or they say something and you take it wrong and it's not what they meant. It's like just not being able to communicate correctly. Um, but I feel like that conversation is coming up and you guys will be able to meet each other halfway and be able to heal from that. And again, the strengthening, the rebonding and the solidification of even igniting the passion for some of you guys out there. OK. All right, my lovelies, moving on. Let's see what's going on with Gemini. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. If you guys like these videos, like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Let's see what's going on with Gemini. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Give me five cards to represent all five aspects. All right, here we go, Gemini. Let's see what's going on with you, my loves. And you guys definitely stay tuned for the podcast. I dated all 12 zodiac signs, so you don't have to. We speak nothing but the truth from our experience. Um, yeah, so <laughs> the tea is piping hot. All right, let's get into it, Gemini. We're starting off here with the Queen of Cups. Oof, Tower. Wow, the world, Ace of Swords, and the Chariot. Wow, 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 wow. Obviously, Gemini is another sign that is going to be experiencing massive transformation in many aspects of your life, Gemini, this year going into next year as well. General energy here, the Ten of Pentacles. So for a lot of you, Gemini's, you're focusing on longevity. You're focusing on long-term. You're focusing on is this worth building? Is it, does it have a future to build something? Um, right at the center, Queen of Cups. This is the situation. This is the representation of really going and internalizing how you feel, internalizing what it is that you want. I see a lot of you guys contemplating. Um, this could even be a bit of nostalgic energy. This could be contemplating about the past, contemplating about that one specific relationship that changed your whole trajectory, how you view relationships and partnerships. Um, for some of you guys, that theme could be coming up, meaning that people from the past that were very transformative, not always in a positive way, may be coming back around, Gemini, and you guys are really internalizing and realizing, have I allowed this person to have such control over me? Have I allowed this person to... Is this person and the way they treated me, did that force me to see relationships in a different way? And if it did, does it still have a hold of me now? Am I still allowing, even if you've never dealt with them, like after two years, for example, you guys are like really looking to the past and you guys are really analyzing, like, did, did I, did this person really force me to close myself off? There's a lot of internalization that's happening right now for some of you guys, um, especially those of you guys that you were dealing with, like an example, if you guys just recently came out of a marriage, some type of separation that happened. It, it's really, it's kind of forcing you. And for some of you guys, it's like triggering the fears that you always had. Um, what's coming to mind is an example, if you were raised in a broken home or or where there wasn't both parents, right? You promised yourself that you would never be the one to walk away or to break the marriage or whatever. And you sacrificed so much. And it was the partner, in fact, that kind of pushed you. Like, it's it's internalizing everything we've experienced, but also realizing, huh, did this person have a lot to do with that? 
did I force myself to be a certain way because I passed judgment on someone from the past? For example, you know, um, father figure or mother figure that you kind of molded yourself into what you wanted or what they wanted you to be. And you're realizing that even through that and even through your sacrifices, it didn't give you the outcome you wanted. If anything, it made you feel like you had to force yourself to protect yourself. Maybe you've pushed people away in the past. Maybe you've had great opportunities in love, but you've kind of self-sabotaged because of those experiences. So for a lot of you guys, you're going through, I, I'm going to go as far as saying you guys are going to be going through a spiritual awakening where you're realizing, do I want something long term? And if the answer to that is yes, am I willing to put in the effort? Am I willing to be consistent? Am I willing to stop being flighty and fully commit to seeing the end result? You know, for some of you guys, it's that you've run away from relationships in the past when you started seeing it get serious because you felt maybe within you that you weren't capable or that you were going to let them down. Or this is speaking to me a lot about self, you know, defense mechanisms that kind of self-sabotage us. And I feel like you're realizing that or you're coming to the understanding of that. For some of you guys, it is in fact the realization that um, there is a conclusion in your life that's happening right now where you're being open or fully embracing the fact that you are deserving, that you do deserve to be happy, that you do deserve to be married, if that's something you want, that you do deserve to experience what it feels like to be solid in a connection. And for some of you guys, especially those of you guys that have been so tainted, you're realizing that you want to be happy. It's almost like I'm hearing you guys say it out loud and it feels so weird. Like, I do want to be loved. I do want to be accepted. I do want to feel like I have that emotional support. So for some of you guys, it's an aha moment. You're realizing that your expectations or what you wanted in the past is no longer what you want. And you're realizing that your desires have changed. And it's okay, Gemini. It's okay to experience that. That is part of growth. And that's what we are meant to do, to continue evolving. Um, now, if you are dealing with a specific connection, what they're showing me here is that, especially those of you guys that are single out there, get ready. Get ready because there is a massive connection that's coming through for you guys and it's going to be around this eclipse that happened. So from now to six months, you will be meeting your person and that person that's coming in is the person you're going to marry. Point blank, period. Um, tower the world, 10 of pentacles. I mean, come on. It's going to completely transform your life. It's going to completely transform your trajectory of what you think you want it. But maybe right now you think you want something in a relationship and then two, three months from now completely changes it where you're like, I'm all in <laughs> and you're not feeling scared anymore because you feel it at a soul level that this person is for you, that this is your person. So massive transformation that's happening here. Now, for others of you, if you're already dealing with this person, there is a massive transformation that's happening where you're realizing you're allowing yourself to be happy. And the moment you're able to do that, Gemini, is the moment that your partner openly, heartedly opens up and gives you the commitment you want or that you've always dreamt of. Beautiful energy here, Gemini. All right, my loves, moving on. Let's see what's going on with Cancer. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Cancers in regards to love and romance. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love. Give me five cards to represent five aspects. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. One more shuffle. Okay, here we go. Cancer. Let's see what's going on with you guys. Alrighty. All right. First card we have the Knight of Pentacles, the Queen of Cups, the Five of Swords, the Queen of Swords, the High Priestess. Wow. Bottom of the deck, we have the Nine of Cups. Okay. 
Cancer, it's going to be very crucial and very important for the remainder of the month of September, especially because of this eclipse we just experienced. I'm going to go as I'm going to go out there as far as to tell you whatever it is that you wish for, whatever it is that you want or desire when it comes to relationships. I need you to be very honest about it moving forward and I need you to stop settling. OK, why do I say that? Because immediately what they're telling me is that you are very quick to settle or you are very quick to accommodate the people that you deal with, the people that you get emotionally invested in. You're very quick to meet them halfway when they haven't even started moving. And as a general energy, your wishes are coming through. The connection you're wanting and desiring is coming through. It's not coming through with the person you're trying to force something with. So you got to be clear about what it is that you want. You got to know without a doubt, this is what I want. This is what I expect. And the moment they're not willing to meet that, you got to learn to walk away from it. Right at the center is the Knight of Pentacles going towards stability, going towards something solid, going towards something long lasting, right? Your feelings and thoughts is the queen of cups. You give unconditionally your person's thoughts and feelings. They're combative. They're egocentric or you have a tendency of dealing with people that are narcissistic or people that are just not committed material, commitment material. And it's like you keep hoping and hoping the actions that you need to take moving forward, you need to be clear and transparent and unapologetic about what you want and what you expect from a partner. Only through this are you going to be able to experience here in the earthly plane your wish fulfillment, which is the commitment and longevity. For some of you guys, you're being forced this month to see something about your partner that you've been ignoring or you've been pretending or you've been, you know, putting on those colored glasses, you're being forced to see them for really who they are and to acknowledge that you can no longer continue emptying your cup, Cancer. For some of you guys, you're realizing that your partner is dealing with someone else or has been communicating with someone else and that's the reason why there's been a lot of aggression in this connection aggression in the sense of like arguments or nitpicking or just petty arguments it's because they're not being transparent they're not being honest about what they're doing and they know that by creating this barrier it's going to give them the opportunity to either pull back or use that as an excuse to not want to be around you but there is a lot of things that are coming out to the open that you're being forced to see this because what they're telling you is your happiness is on its way, Cancer. It's kind of like I see you guys grasping it, almost like kind of running towards it. And what Spirit is telling you is stop running. Let it come to you. Stop trying to force or run towards your partner to make it work. Let them come to you. Let them put in the effort. Let them show you. And if they're not for you, let them fall through. Because you're loving, you're giving, you're nurturing. You're deserving. And it's here at your grasp. Are you going to sacrifice your true happiness for someone or something that is not even half of what you deserve. That is not even giving you half of what you are asking for. Or someone that makes you feel like you're asking for too much. When in fact, what's coming to mind is just consistency. That's not, that's not too much. <laughs> so stop settling, Cancer. You want massive change? Stop settling and you're going to see. You're going to see. That that person that is for you is stepping in. All right, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Leo. Finally, last but not least, Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. 
Let's see what's going on in their love life. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Give me five cards to represent five aspects of this connection. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Leos. All right. Here we go, Leo. Let's see what's going on with you guys. If you guys are interested in personal readings or any type of spell work, go ahead and click the link below. You'll be able to find all of our links underneath the description box below. All right, we're starting off here with the Queen of Cups right at the center. Wow, we have the Queen of Swords here, okay? High Priestess, for some of you Leos, you're dealing with a Cancer. Or cancer, you may be dealing with the Leo, as I'm seeing a bit of a few cards that are very similar. All right, next card we have here is the Five of Swords and the Six of Pentacles. Okay, bottom of the deck, Knight of Pentacles. Okay, so Leo, I see you really trying the best you can to stabilize this connection or to stabilize this relationship right at the center with the Queen of Cups. You may feel a little bit out of your element right now. For some of you guys, feeling a little bit overly emotional um maybe even a little bit critical and the thing here is i feel for a lot of you guys because we have the queen of swords here in the position of your thoughts and feelings i do see you guys being very analytical very maybe even passing judgment on your partner for some of you guys you're feeling like your partner's not being completely honest or transparent um I feel like this has more to do astrologically how it's affecting you in your chart because what they're showing me here is the trifecta, right? A triangle, female energy, right? So there are certain there are certain points in your birth chart that are being activated right now where you feel overly emotional and this doesn't feel good to you because you're not used to it. So then it's making you feel like you got to be on the defense and you got to be like very watchful of how they're acting or what they're doing or what they say. You kind of try to read between the lines. And it's because of these activations that are happening astrologically wise in your chart that is making you really look at the relationship like with the loop, basically, like looking at it very closely and I can't help to shake the feeling of like feeling like there is like they're not being completely honest. Um, here's the thing, though, the action that needs to be taken, the action that you need to take to be able to move forward is put the resistance down. Is stop allowing your ego to get the best of you in this connection, Leo. And I feel for some of you guys, it could potentially be because this person that you're dealing with is either extremely sensitive or extremely empathetic that you're probably used to a more aggressive reaction and it's making you question like are they are they stringing me along are they hiding things from me are they and I feel strongly like they're not, but I feel like what you're, tr what you're being triggered with right now is traumas. Now this could be traumas from this relationship, not to say that this person hasn't, you know, they've really put you through the ringer and they've tested you and you have every right to feel defensive, right? But I ask you guys, and I highly encourage you Leos out there to ask yourself, are you are you overreacting in a way because you feel like your pride or your ego is being hurt? And if that's the case, then the bigger question here is, are you willing to be vulnerable and to give them the opportunity to balance that energy, to balance communication, to have an open conversation, to be honest and transparent? Here's the thing, for a lot of you guys, what I'm hearing is that astrologically, yes, you're being triggered in different aspects, and that's why you're overly emotional, and the overly emotional makes you feel very aggressive because you don't like to be in that vulnerable state. Now, 
in regards to your partner with the high priestess here, I feel like they're really trying, right? Um, maybe even trying to understand why you're a bit moody for some of you. But I feel like the advice here is basically get out of your ego, Leo. Sometimes, my love, it's not always about you. And what I mean by that is sometimes we have a tendency, and I can attest to this because I myself, I mean, I'm a Capricorn. I like my shit a certain way. And sometimes when, you know, I'm dealing with the person and my partner is not giving me the attention that I'm so used to, I immediately start to think like, is it something I did? Is it something I said? Because I do have a tendency of being a little bit mean. Um, so I got to kind of chin check myself. And... I've had partners in the past tell me like, no, it's not, it's not you. It's, it's the work, you know, it's, it's gotten to the point where work is like so stressful and, and, you know, and then it makes me feel like an asshole because I'm like, here I was, you know, <laughs> making it about me when sometimes we got to remember that people deal with things on every day, everyday life things, you know, and, and sometimes we could get, at a point where we're sensitive and where we feel a little bit more than usual or overly sensitive that sometimes our partner's reaction is not even a reaction towards us. It has more to do with like how they're feeling in that moment in time or what they're going through. Most of the time, our partners won't even, I mean, if you're dealing with people that are more, you know, not all the time are they going to express to you their struggles at work and stuff like that because they don't want to burden you. So what I'm seeing here is it's okay to be vulnerable. And if you're feeling overly emotional, it's okay. And my advice to you would be to be honest in how you express yourself and how you communicate, but doing it in a loving way, not waiting till your partner pisses you off to pop off on them because that's what creates, you know, the difficulties, the blockages, but not only that, that's what puts your partner in a position of feeling like they're walking on eggshells because they don't want to trigger you or they don't want to set you off. And you also don't want a partner that feels like they have to be careful with what they say because you may take it a different way. So the advice here is be honest and transparent about what you want and what you expect or what is bothering you, Leo, but come from a loving place. Don't wait to be set off. Don't wait till your ego and pride take over. And then you take it to the next level because you've had enough. You know what I mean? Like nip it in the butt when it's happening. This will bring balance. This will bring even your partner to be more uh, willing and able to meet you halfway to even help you balance that energy out. All right, my loves. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed these readings. If you did, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe to our channel, and I will see you guys soon. Stay tuned because we have tons of new spell videos coming through for you guys, as well as the podcast episodes, as well as more readings for you guys. So you guys take care. Till then, bye.